Good evening. My name is Professor Ross, and today we're going to learn about ballistics. So our mission in the shop today is to come up with armor that you can make in a Saturday in your garage with materials that can be found at Home Depot and that, that can be built with regular tools. So no need for like a plasma cutter or having to cut really heavy steel, like AR-500 steel is what's typically used as armor. It's super heavy and it takes special tools to work. You really can't drill it, you can't work it with normal tools. So our idea here is to give you, Ready Man, the chance to build something in your garage with materials that are available at Home Depot or Lowe's and bang out um, ballistic door panels in a Saturday. If we want to defeat a bullet, we can either defeat it with brute force, meaning put a half inch of AR-500 steel in front of the bullet, which of course is heavy, expensive, and difficult to do. Or we can screw up the bullet's fragile game and win. So let's see how that might work. First of all, we need to understand that a bullet is powerful because this whole weight of the bullet, see the bullet is, the bullet in the case of our, our AK-47 round, is 7.62, so it is seven, almost a little over seven and a half millimeters across. And a bullet, it then is this long, so it's also long. All of that bullet weight impacts at one tiny little point, creating a huge amount of focus of energy. What if, though, what if we could get a bullet to turn on its side when it strikes? If we could get a bullet to turn on its side, then it would be hitting on the round end. And instead of being this thick, from here to here, it would only be this thick. Maybe one third, one quarter as thick. And it would be striking along the whole side of the bullet. I've taken my, so I've taken my plasma cutter and cut these uh, just little pieces of steel out of 16 gauge, just 16 gauge mild steel. Um, I'll, I'll probably use one as my backer just to catch any frag. Just cutting up these little fiberglass panels as kind of the, the base of the ballistic panel. They're light and uh, they're, really, they're really hard to penetrate. So it's taken me about 45 minutes to get 20 layers down. And we don't know if 20 layers are really necessary. Um, we've got a 15 layer, oh pardon, we've got a 12 layer mat going. It's all ready to rock and roll. And this is going to be our heavy duty one in case that one fails. Lord knows. So on the base we have the 12 layers of the, of the fiberglass woven. And then uh, up here we've added, uh, kind of locked into the, locked in with resin, we've added uh, two layers. One layer here of marbles and then two layers here. Um, so we're trying to get the bullet to hit the layers of marble, get it to yaw. So defeating a bullet is actually a lot easier than you think. If you free your mind of the old notion of just stopping a bullet with thick, heavy steel, it becomes actually pretty easy. Again, a bullet is flying in a perfect spiral. If we can knock it off its game, make it float sideways, it's called keyholing. If we can keyhole the bullet sideways, then we can defeat its trajectory and it takes very little to actually stop the bullet. Right now this is already much lighter than the similar piece of the AR-500, but if we can get away with one layer of marbles, then it'll be really light. So we're coming up with something that's easy, light, and you can make it home on a Saturday to vastly improve the up armoring of your, of your bug out. Here we got Jeff and Evan. We're gonna take some bets here. I already got a bet going with Chad. Okay. If any one of these four panels works, from now on I'm right about everything. <laughs> no, seriously, that's the bet. That's the bet. So, so here, let's take some bets on, on what each of us think, uh, think are going to happen. So we got four different panels, two different thicknesses of, uh, two, we got single and double marble and two different thicknesses of fiberglass. We've got 12 layers and 20 layers. Okay. We're going to, now we're just talking 7.62 by 39, AK-47. 
Okay, so let's take bets. Okay, Jeff, you're the one with the most experience, so we gotta like make our decision, not let hit what he says color, what yep. we think. Yep. What do you think is gonna happen? Uh, I think the double layer is a definite maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, the single layer, I think it'll. I, I don't think it'll stop it. Um, and then with the with the other uh, multicolored marbles, I I, th I give that a the double layer. I give it a definite maybe uh, that it'll work. On the 76239. You sound like you've done ballistic testing before. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so you're talking about ballistic testing. I mean, what's the, the basic theory here? What are we what are we after? So essentially what we want to be able to do is when the projectile hits, when you talk about fast removing projectiles, you want to either deform that projectile or you want to yaw that projectile. The idea being is you want to increase the surface area so that the soft stuff in the back can catch it. I think what you've put together here, it's pretty ingenious. All right, what's your bet, Evan? Well, based on the fact that I agree with Jeff on everything that we do, uh, <laughs> I, I think we're at a definite maybe. And uh, and obviously, you know, looking at it, I think the single layer of marbles, uh, I really don't think that that's gonna penetrate or it's, it's going to penetrate all the way through. I think it'll actually fracture out some of that epoxy and the double layers, uh, I, I think we're still gonna blow through, but I think it'll be less, uh, obviously, a, a, less uh, of a penetration. Uh, so when we start talking about this, uh, you know, 556, five, small bullet, not green tip, small bullet, doesn't retain its energy very well. Um, so when it hits, it immediately is dumping that energy and yawing, which is why it's such a great bullet for, you know, why we use it in the military for combat and whatnot. What's the standard grain weight of that of that 762 by 39 bullet? 124. 124, so it's 120, twice. 123, 124 grain bullet. Twice the AR-15. Yeah, most of your ARs, you get, a, you get a pretty broad spectrum for ARs, but if you're talking the bullet that is used the most is that 55, 55. grain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. half. But now all of a sudden that 55 grain is moving, Tons you know, 3,000 feet per second, depending on the length of the barrel and all of that stuff. So now you've got that big gap in velocity, which makes up, you know, you take mass times velocity squared to give you your energy when it's hitting. So, and that's why we say with, in ballistics, it's one of those things where everything works out great on paper and then you go out and you, you test it and you go, oh, well, we didn't see that. And then you go back and you try and figure out what happened. And I vote for just getting it right the first time. Let's, <laughs> let's see if that happens. Let's see if we, let's see if we uh, get the fairy tale ending here. Yeah. All right. Get any glass on you? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Stopped it. Look at that. Stopped it cold. It didn't even penetrate into the uh, fiberglass. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay, we know at least that works. This is what we discovered when we put this to practice. The bullet flew in. So this is a 762 by 39, approximately 120 grain bullet. So it's a heavy bullet. It's a big bruiser of a bullet. Twice as heavy as an AR-15 round, a 223. The bullet comes in and it strikes a marble anywhere on the surface, unless it strikes a marble dead center, which is virtually impossible. So it, it, will, it will strike and begin to yaw. So as the bullet strikes the marble, it begins to yaw. Now, we thought initially the, mo the marble might just explode. That didn't happen. As the bullet struck the marble, the marble simply napped. So chunks, the marbles are so hard that chunks of the marble fly off, and these are just, Larger pieces of the marble just nap off, but most of the marble remains. So the bullet, as it hits that nap, it immediately begins to yaw. It begins to fall off its true path. It's losing a ton of energy because it hits something that hard, and it's probably mushrooming. It's probably flattening out in here a little bit on its nose, but it's also yawing, and that's what's really killing it. So it begins to turn, and as it turns, it strikes more marbles. So more of these ultra hard glass marbles get in its way, screwing up its flight path even more. So here, ultimately, it makes a complete yaw as it starts to strike the fiberglass, and it hits the fiberglass sideways, causing the bullet that's already lost a significant percentage of its energy to hit a fibrous substance. This strong fibrous fiberglass hits it on the side and the bullet simply cannot 
penetrate, simply cannot defeat that fiberglass when it's off its game. I, I think I would do the back and fiberglass, but set this in rhino lining so it's more flexible. Yeah. And doesn't explode like that, you know, so we keep more marbles in that's, place. That's the way to do it, because this is, this is fragile. I mean, this is going to shatter. Yeah, it's, it's hyper brittle. It's too brittle. So we know marbles will stop that round, at least in a double layer. Yep. We got to beat all this. So, so now what we've got based off of this, as long as we don't go between the marbles, then it, it looks like we didn't even get to the, the fiberglass layer here. No, it took, it took exactly zero off of, there was no penetration in the fiberglass whatsoever. So the yawing is working. Yeah. Um, so now we can see if, if there's enough up here to cause the bullet to yaw. <laughs> It definitely penetrated the woving some. Oh, no go! Yeah. Woo! Wow, really? <laughs> yeah. Look at that. No penetration, but wow. it did It did deform. Look, it didn't even penetrate the, the woving. Yeah. So this is bare minimum. One layer is bare minimum. Bare minimum. Let's keep it from going through. So that's 12 layers defeated an, AR, uh, an AK round. That's very, very cool. Yeah. There it is. D DIY armor, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that'll, that'll totally work. Make it in your garage from shit you can buy at Lowe's. So for all you doubting Thomases, this is the back of the bullet. It smashed flat. So the bullet struck on the nose here and then flipped sideways and then pooped out all of its lead from the front and the back. It literally burst. I've never, in all of my years of hunting, I've never seen a bullet do this before. Oh, hey, Chad. So you and I had a little side bet going uh, on this, <laughs> and I'm kind of here to collect right now. Uh, so, um, so that you know, um, as you may know, we were we had a little bet here, and uh, it was for something far more. Uh, you need some more of that. You go fill her up, man. This was far more important than money. So what was I was right about what now? Uh, if this worked, uh, I don't remember. I think it was. I think the the bet was where I was right about everything. Um, if this worked out, so hey, tell you what, nobody was more surprised than me that it, that it worked like this. So uh, yeah. yeah, awesome.